Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tim Lee. I'm a research analyst at Red Cloud Securities. I am delighted to host a Red Cloud webinar on zinc exploration and development today. We will hear from Rowan Hazelton, President and CEO of Norzinc Limited. During today's webinar, he will provide an overview and outlook. Then we will take questions. You can type your questions in the chat box at any time, and we will get to as many as we can. Before we kick things off, first we need to discuss the fine print. During this Norz Inc. webinar, forward-looking statements may be made. I would direct listeners to the company's forward-looking statements disclosure outlined on page two of the Norz Inc. corporate presentation, and that can be found on the company's website, norzinc.com. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only. It should not be considered a solicitation or a recommendation to buy or sell securities, we note that this call does not consider the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigation and seek their own professional advice before investing. And please see our most recent research located on the Red Cloud website for specific disclosures on Norzinc. So we have Norzinc presenting today. The company is focused on advancing its Prairie Creek zinc lead silver project located in the Northwest Territories. We recently initiated coverage on Norz Inc, highlighting the high grade deposit at Prairie Creek and the advanced nature of the project, which appears poised for near term construction start. With that, I now turn it over to Rowan to update our audience on the company. Great. Thanks a lot, Tim, and I uh, appreciate uh, everyone joining this afternoon. And, and in particular, uh, thank Tim and Red Cloud for initiating coverage on Norz Inc. Uh, and as mentioned, you can find that on, on the Red Cloud website. Um, so very excited to, to give an update about uh, Norz Inc. and our, our Prairie Creek project uh, in the NWT. Uh, and as mentioned, a very high grade zinc lead silver project, and one of the next projects to, to be developed uh, in Northern Canada um, and, and a practically shovel ready. Um, I'll go into uh, some of the highlights. Uh, again, it is a, a very high grade deposit uh, both on a zinc basis and a zinc equivalent basis in the fall we put up out a uh, pea an updated uh, study on expanded mine plan at 2400 tons per day showing a 20-year mine life uh, and an mpv of, of 300 million us uh, which is is certainly strong relative to uh, to our market cap at, at the current moment um, located in in the nwt with a strong uh, but small management team uh, a very strong board and and a, um, uh, a a strong and supportive key shareholder in in RCF resource capital funds uh, at approximately forty eight percent ownership who provide both capital and, and technical expertise. Uh, we'll we'll discuss briefly our, our CSR approach uh, and and also the you know near term potential of, of this project. We are in the process of finalizing uh, updated permits uh, both for the expanded mine plan and the uh, winter road in, in the next uh, very near term in the next several months uh, and be in a position to start construction of a, of a winter road and then move into, into full construction, you know, subject to financing uh, in, in, uh, in 2023. Um, just on, on some of those key highlights today, a resource of mineable inventory of, of over 16 million tons at uh, approximately 23, 24% zinc equivalent uh, uh, based on, um, depending on, on your metal price uh, ratios. Uh, and um, and the, the project consists of, of uh, um, uh, three ore types uh, in, in uh, primarily the main quartz vein, uh, the high grade portion, uh, as well as stockworks and, and uh, strata bound massive sulfides. Just looking at the photos on the right, for those who aren't familiar with, with our project, we do have significant existing infrastructure. Uh, when the project was first built uh, 40 years ago under the name Cadillac Silver to about a 90, 95% completion, but was never operated. So we still have uh, the, the surface infrastructure of a thousand ton per day mill that was never turned on, uh, as well as uh, surface buildings um, uh, and also five kilometers of, of underground workings that again were, were prepared and, and opened up, but never, never mind. The, the most uh, uh, ore that was taken out was approximately 30,000 tons of, uh, of ore. Uh, as mentioned, MPV of approximately 300 million at, uh, at the metal prices used in the study, $1.20 zinc primarily, uh, and at, at $1.20 
50 zinc, for example, uh, the project will be close to 500 million uh, NPV with strong uh, operating cash flows and, and free cash flows uh, per year after uh, CapEx uh, and all costs of, of in the sort of 60 million US range at, at the base case uh, metal price range. Um, and on a, on a saleable uh, product, we, we have entered in MOUs uh, and, and updated an MOU last year with Belieden uh, for a substantial amount of, of zinc concentrate, uh, as as well as historic MOU with uh, with Korea Zinc. We've been in, we are currently still in discussions with a number of major, uh, both primary smelters uh, and and key traders, uh, and feel very strongly that uh, that you know, we've we've got demand for well over uh, you know over over. Uh, subscribed demand for both our zinc and, and lead concentrates. Uh, you know, just on on you know some of the, the key achievements now uh, and that we're looking at currently. I mean, in the past year, uh, we did we finalized uh, a key agreement with uh, First Nation, the Lilliquay First Nation in Fort Simpson. Uh, we have you know full agreement signed with with our two main uh, First Nation partners uh, and finalizing uh, a third uh in the uh in in the coming month approximately we updated an mou with parts canada and Belieden, as mentioned uh and also the you know helpful that that zinc was added to the critical minerals list uh at early last year and also uh in in the us uh later last year uh which you know does lend to to you know positive discussions with uh, various levels of government especially the federal government uh having announced uh you know a very strong um critical minerals uh, budget of 3.8 billion dollars over eight years uh, and we are in discussions on as they continue to to, to outline details uh, of, of those budgets and and then possibly being able to access uh, some of that funding um you know it for this year uh as mentioned some of our key catalysts are uh finalizing the permits for the for the expanded mine plan from 1600 tons per day of which uh, we published a feasibility study in 2017 uh and and obtained all permits uh for for uh for for that size and we are amending those uh we have received the the final draft of those permits um in in the last uh, month uh and and actually uh following the end of this week we'll be submitting our closing arguments for those permits and expect to get a response uh into june uh and with approval into into july uh at the 2400 tons per day uh we also um, have been advancing and are and actually as of this date are, are close to 80 percent complete on on all management plans which are conditions of of the permits that we have for for phase one or the winter road phase one of the all season access road uh in order to be able to start that construction uh in q4 of this year uh on on site uh, for work program this summer uh we are pleased to be to be working with a, a new drill partner this summer uh looking at a minimum of 5300 meters of uh of exploration and, and study drilling uh, and possibly expanding that up to uh 6500 to to 7500 meters uh with Primarily work on on obtaining uh, new higher quality data to to do an updated feasibility study to to reinitiate uh, in later this year in in early Q4 uh, in in terms of uh, additional information on on geotech uh, structural controls and, and dilution as well as uh, expanding a MET study uh, to do a full uh, MET cycle um, block cycle testing on 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 uh, samples from from the drilling samples to 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 give stronger indication of our our concentrate uh estimates for uh, the first three or up to five years of uh, of production uh we have just announced uh, a us six million bridge loan from from rcf uh continue to to show their strong support of of the project uh to fund uh our, our summer work program uh and then and then lead into uh, uh potentially additional uh, funding uh, in, in Q3 of this year. Um, uh, the, we will, we, we're expecting to begin at the end of this year, the, the, the phase one of winter road and, and, and bring the first access, you know, road access to the project in over 40 years. It's currently a fly in, fly out uh, site. Uh, and, and we strongly believe, you know, this will be the, the, the key uh, to, to, uh, accessing the project and 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 providing the you know catalyst for for our next steps in, in the project which is to 
uh, bring together project financing um, by by approximately Q3 of next year. Uh, and we will um, resume a, a feasibility study we, we just started at the beginning of this year uh, to and use the updated information from, from our summer work program uh, and 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 bring that into a higher quality study at at, a, at the 2,400 tons per day, uh, and build on on the PA that, that we issued late last year. Uh, just on some high level information on on the project on a zinc equivalent basis, uh, as mentioned, the North Zinc and Prairie Creek stand out uh, as very high grade compared to to other development projects. Um, and also, you know, that high grade translates into to a, a low cost project being in the bottom third of costs on a byproduct basis, uh, an estimate by Wood McKenzie here for for projects to be in production at 2027 uh, of 19 cents uh, per pound uh, per pound zinc and then C3 cost with with all capex included at, at 60 cents per pound. Uh, these are just some highlights from from the PA uh, issued in in uh, October of last year. Uh, as mentioned, the the uh, you know some sensitivity at, at at a higher zinc price, which is still still less than than current spot prices, um, as well as uh, initial capital uh, of three hundred sixty eight million, uh, which of which approximately one hundred million uh, is is the road construction, which is which is still a, a substantial. Uh, you know, portion of, of the overall capex, and and hence our focus on getting the road uh, up and up and going uh, later this year. Uh, just a profile of of payable production uh, of zinc, lead, and silver uh, during the project, and and one number I'd highlight in gray is the the silver production, which averages two point six uh, million payable uh, ounces throughout the life of the project. Uh, and varies from 2.4 up to 2.8, um, which you know really makes this is one of the stands out of this project uh, is the ability to to leverage that silver value uh, and and likely uh, have a silver stream be a strong component of of uh, uh, of the overall project finance. Um, you know, possibly you know up to uh, up to fifty percent or, or approximately of of total uh, capital needs with with even a, a silver stream that that retains fifty percent exposure uh, for uh, for existing shareholders. Just uh, a couple of points on on our approach to to CSR and, and ESG. Uh, we have you know a very small you know physical footprint as you can see in 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 this photo. Uh, here uh, and in the previous photos, uh, and as well a very small um, environmental footprint. We have a plan, a uh, design plan for for no tailings to use 100% paste and backfill back underground. Uh, and what you see that looks like a tailings pond there is a, a lined pond um, from the original design, uh, and we'll be uh, dividing that into two two water cells, one to to recycle. 100% uh, water recycling and treatment from from the mill and back to the mill, uh, as as well as the other cell to to treat uh, normal runoff water, um, uh, and treat and discharge that. Uh, I touched briefly on you know our, our our strong support and 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 relationships with uh, with our partnerships with the local First Nations. Uh, the primary being Nahani Band. Uh, the mine is located on their traditional territory. Uh, as well as the, the LKFN and, and ADK, uh, where the the road, uh, our access proposed access road goes through uh, parts of, of their traditional territory. And, and as mentioned, we expect to to have final and, and full complete uh, agreements uh, on the third final agreement with ADK uh, negotiated and, and finalized in, in by the end of this quarter. Uh, and we also have commitments with with the. Government of Northwest Territories, um, socioeconomic agreements on our commitments to to local employment, uh, training, um, and, and as well as local contracts. On an exploration uh, uh, side, you know, the, here's a, a cross section of, of the deposit, uh, red and measured, green indicated, and, and blue uh, inferred resources, making a total strike length of just over two kilometers. Uh, and we know that the the deposit. Uh, we, you know, is very continuous. We expect it to to uh, uh, continue a long strike and 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 go you know further at depth uh, at approximately a, a fifteen percent 
incline. Uh, there has been you know one drill hole uh, two kilometers to the north and basically two kilometers deep that shows you know, very strong and similar results, particularly in uh, in lithology and, and mineralogy. Um, and and you know we expect that what looks like a twenty year mine life today you know could could very you know very much. Uh, expand potentially double, uh, including uh, you know resources to the to the north as well as uh, extensions to to the south. And there's a summary of of uh, the total resource estimate. Um, and speaking of the um, you know, of additional uh, material, you know here's a on the uh, on the left you can see you know how uh, the challenge of drilling too far to the north as the as the ore body dips the the topography. Uh, steepens, uh, hence the, the one drill hole to to the north, uh, and then on the right hand side you can see our, our 16 kilometers of our our existing uh, concessions with strong results uh, even to the south of, of Prairie Creek where the main quartz vein has come to surface and 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 keeps um, sort of breaking and faulting along at, at surface and there's there's been historic uh, reserve resource uh, in that location that, that we expect possibly in the future to be able to build on and, and expand the mine life and there are also other showings uh, as you can see uh, you know far to the north uh, as well as to uh, to the northwest which once once mine you know, we, we you know currently that you know this is really about uh, leveraging and 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 accessing, you know, the, the the ore body that we have defined today, uh, but there's a strong exploration uh, story in the future as as we as we mine uh, and can expand expand mine life. Um, you know, with respect to the the in, the infrastructure that we have today, uh, on the right is is a you know picture inside the mill and the existing 1,000 ton per day. Uh, on the left is a conceptual plan uh, for the expanded. Mill at 2,400 tons per day, you know, being able to use and leverage approximately 50% of the existing infrastructure, including and in, in especially the, uh, uh, the I mean, the foundation uh, and the, the overall steel infrastructure and 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 the uh, you know and the and the envelope of the building. Um, in the in the figure on the left, uh, you can see the 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 far left is in the bright blue uh, would be the new paste um, paste plant uh, in order to to uh, to generate paste for for the paste and backfill, um, as well as new new water uh, uh, you know water water treatment and and a DMS circuit dense media separa separation circuit, uh, which will allow us to to mine at the uh, twenty four hundred ton per day rate, but but remove approximately twenty percent of of low low to no grade ore uh, to upgrade it going into the circuit. Um, this. Graphic, you know, showing our, our proposed access road, 170 kilometers. It really is the key to to unlocking the value and the schedule of the project, uh, and it's essentially a a um, three winter, uh, two summer campaign uh, to to uh, uh, to be able to build an all season road. The initial winter uh, road being constructed uh, over um, uh, you know Q Q late Q4 this year. Uh, into Q1 and, and into Q2 of uh, of next year, uh, and then after that, two winter, two summer campaigns to to build to bring in over winter roads uh, uh, the, all all the equipment uh, needed to to uh, begin the surface re rehabilitation and, and mine rehabilitation. Uh, on the overall, uh, you know, schedule the um, uh, you know the, the road. Uh, really becomes, you know, is is the main bottleneck that that uh, you know brings us to a three-year project. Uh, the actual site rehab and development is is closer to eighteen to twenty-four months, um, and beginning, of course, at the top with an updated feasibility study and looking at at being you know, approximately uh, middle to early Q three of next year to complete and and complete a project financing uh, and be in production by the by the end of twenty twenty five. On, on the full all season road, uh, on the permitting side, uh, we did touch on you know we you know we have received the the drafts of the permits as well as uh, final closing arguments from from all uh, public parties, uh, and and we'll be submitting ours uh, this week, uh, and then and then receiving uh, uh, notification from from uh, the regulator uh, next month uh, with uh, um, one of the the two main permits. Uh, the land use permit can be issued immediately 
uh, and water license goes to to the the, the minister of uh, Northwest Territories Environment uh, for approval. Uh, and on the access road, uh, we expect to to complete and, and finalize all management plans uh, by the late Q2 or in the into uh, into July in the next couple months. Just a couple, a bit, a bit of information on on zinc. Uh, again, you know, you know, critical mineral. Uh, you know, looking at the up in the top right, you know, the, the main use of, of zinc are still in galvanizing steel, but even in in that usage, uh, you know, that becomes a, a foundational element for uh, for a lot of the decarbonizing of the economy, whether it's steel going into uh, you know into wind turbines, electric vehicles. And so on, uh, and there's also some very, uh, you know, innovative uses of, of zinc, uh, even in the in the battery space, uh, zinc air battery technology. That's really an industrial scale battery that can be used to to uh, to store uh, electricity for uh, building and another large infrastructure, uh, as well as you know, you know, significant um, uh, um, health uses in terms of fertilizer and 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 supplements uh, for zinc. Um, by you know, and and you know, there there are you know projections by Wood McKenzie you know for for a shortage uh, in in you know continued shortage in you know five years out approximately uh, of uh, um, on zinc. Um, this is just a highlight of of you know primarily zinc and silver you know being used in you know in significant aspects of uh, of you know the green or or decarbonizing economy. Um, uh, in terms of you know wind power, silver obviously in in uh, uh, in solar cells, <clears throat> especially. Uh, so just to summarize, um, you know, the you know, you know the, the Prairie Creek project you know is a very you know large scale high grade deposit uh, that that you know can't with a you know a fantastic you know geology that that you know can be in development and construction here in the very short term. Uh, and then be in, be in production by the by the end of 2025. Uh, it, it makes up you know one of the few you know large scale zinc projects uh, that uh, you know in in that you know imminent months here will be you know, fully permitted uh, you know and ready to to be financed and and move forward. Um, as mentioned, you know, RCF you know, owns 49%. Continue to be a very strong uh, and supportive shareholder with uh, you know. Um, which we believe, you know, will, will continue to continue to be so, um, and we have uh, uh, two royalties on the project totaling 2.2 uh, 2.2 percent. Um, I will uh, pause there and, and and ask for any questions. Great, thank you, Rowan, for a very informative presentation. Uh, we'll now start the Q and A portion of the webinar. Reminder to everyone on the line that you can type your questions into the chat box at any time. And we already do have a few questions. Um, first, by signing the MOU with Boliden and Korea Zinc, uh, will, I guess, will all the zinc concentrates be processed abroad or is there any intention to process zinc concentrates within Canada? So we are in discussion with with two parties in in Canada. Um, you know, we, we'd be, we're very keen to to continue to explore those. Uh, um, you know, the, the existing MOUs have have flexibility and aren't for uh, the complete production at, at the moment. And so, you know, we 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 are continuing discussions with uh, you know with with two key parties that that have significant facilities in Canada. It would certainly um, certainly at the moment look like it would be you know a, a decent savings in in terms of uh, fuel and transportation uh, to be able to process in Canada, in addition to, um, you know, obviously all countries, when you talk about critical minerals, uh, you, you know, also at times use the, you know, the term strategic minerals, and, and a lot of it is gained about uh, or is geared at, uh, uh, you know, securing supply chains, you know, within either our jurisdiction or let's say North America, uh, you know, Canada, U.S. And and so, I, you know, I think the, the, the greater the more we can be a part of, uh, you know, a, a supply chain that that stays within North America. Uh, I think that leads to, you know, potential, you know, to greater um, support, in particular from, say, government, uh, you know, and otherwise. Great. And you had uh, mentioned this during the presentation, but kind of the the timelines uh, looking toward production. But when would you expect to start producing income, uh, so you're not dependent on on borrowing and, and other financing. 
Sure. Uh, I mean, according to you know, our current plan, we'd be in production in in uh, in early Q4 of 2025. Um, you know, we we hope it would be a relatively quick ramp up. That uh, essentially by uh, early 26, um, certainly the first half, if not if not sooner, you know, first first quarter, uh, to be in you know a free cash flow position, uh, you know, and beginning to to you know to repay you know funding, assuming. You know, we, we you know assume that some of that funding will be in a you know debt debt instrument. <clears throat> Great. And on the financing front, um, obviously you do have the agreement with uh, agreements in place with um, uh, concentrate buyers. But would financing also potentially be available through those concentrate buyers? Yeah, no, thanks for the question. Um, you know, we are in discussions with with the, the same parties, uh, you know, for the most part about potential potential financing options. Certainly what is very common is is sort of a working capital financing that would be available, you know, site kind of you know within six months, let's say, of of uh getting to production. But there are you know a number of instances, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm sure you know you're you're aware of uh you know market examples in, in say the past six months, especially where, where um, a couple of the major trader smelter parties, uh, you know, have, have come forward with, with, uh, you know, more structured type of finance, let's say, whether it's, you know, some equity or, an, or early equity slash, you know, uh, debenture type, type instruments. And so we are, we are in discussions, you know, I think, you know, in our case, the, uh, you know, the strong, um, silver component, which could be, you know, you know, uh, you know, in particular on, you know, that reports primarily to the lead con, you know, can be, uh, you know, a potential uh, in that area, uh, as well as, you know, and which, you know, leads to the other point that that you know, silver stream, you know, is likely to be to be a strong a strong component as well. Um, but yeah, there are there are um, there certainly are a precedence and an interest, uh, you know, from. Uh, you know, for potential parties that that in order to, uh, you know, secure, you know, uh, you know, a long term contract, um, you know, certainly a lot of variables go into into a concentrate marketing contract, but to, to secure a longer term contract, um, you know, certainly, you know, our expectation would be, uh, you know, on either, you know, favorable commercial terms or or some type of, uh, you know, financing or financing support. Um, and in some cases, you know, there's, you know, there, there's, depending on the jurisdiction, you know, governmental export credit agency support in, in, uh, in those types of arrangements. And, and so we're exploring those as well. Great. Uh, looking on the permitting side of things, um, you had given a, a, an update on, on the, on the schedule here, but are there any foreseeable obstacles to approval for the all season road? Um, no, we, we don't believe so. I mean, we do need to, in terms of number one, I mean, for the beginning of the all season road, which is the phase one, um, uh, you know, you know, again, we, we, we've worked very hard this year after, uh, you know, our delay at the end of last year in, to work with the regulators in particular, you know, the portion of the road that, that, uh, or the ex proposed road that goes through parks, Canada, we, you know, we've worked very closely with them and, 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 you know, improved our, our communication and relationships such that, you know, I, I, you know, we're, we're you know, working together on, on, you know, on, uh, you know, making sure that we comply uh, with the requirements. Uh, and I feel confident about that. Um, you know, we do, when we go from phase one to the phase two winter road, we will need to uh, amend and, and renew, um, you know, a number of the, the, same, you know, management plans into a phase two. Uh, and so we are uh, going to be, we begin that process, you know, immediately following, you know, the, the completion in the next, you know, month or two of, of the phase one. Uh, and, and, and two things we're going to do differently. I mean, number one, start, start much, much earlier and also um, sit down with the regulators with a proposed schedule uh, of the various aspects of that and come to an agreement that, you know, that, that, uh, uh, you know that 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 is a workable schedule, and and make changes if necessary. So you know, I I, I feel you know, confident that, that starting you know on an early basis, you know we can you know make any of the amendments to the phase two of the road um, uh, on, on this these sub certifications kind of referred to as management plans before um, you know before we get to uh, you know giving us you know plenty of of time and runway to to complete. Great, great. Um, and 
you had spoken on relations with uh, with the First Nations, but what are what are your relations overall like with the First Nations and other stakeholders uh, related to the project? Sure. No, thanks. Um, I mean, uh, on on I mean, the local communities are are essentially prim you know primarily, if not you know almost all you know First Nation you know primarily First Nation communities. Um, you know, I was able you know with the dropping of the pandemic. Uh, conditions able to get there in in early April and, and and meet a lot of the local leaders that I hadn't met in person. Um, you know, I'm very pleased to say that that I think we have you know, very strong support, which is reflected in in our permitting process and 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 uh, um, and, and and sort of evidence in that and in, in the in the support letters and comments and 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 that that we get. But importantly, um, you know, I'm I'm very energized by by the people I've you know I've met the the people in leadership positions and in, in in all our local communities, uh, you know, are very not only just supportive of the project, but very you know open and progressive. You know, wanting to work together. You know, obviously primarily for you know advancing the project for employment uh, and and benefit to to the local region. Um, you know, one thing that's you know I, I, you know not necessarily well known, but in in that particular portion of the NWT known as the Decho region, um, um, has not had an industrial scale. Um, you know. You know, project or industrial scale, you know, activity um, in its history. So, unlike other parts of NWT that have have had significant you know, mining development, whether it was the original gold mines or, or later diamond mines or or even other oil and gas activity uh, in 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 the Daytro region. So they're you know they're you know extremely supportive and 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 certainly very um, you know very keen to help us get this project you know going at a broader scale. To, to answer your question, you know, at the NWT level uh, and other you know, areas of government from a regular regulatory point of view. You know, I think we're, you know we've we've improved. We're, we're you know those um, you know the relationship and communication. You know, significantly. You know, we have strong support at at, at those levels of of government, and in particular, more recently, uh, you know, been spending a fair bit of time you know speaking to the federal government, in particular in relation to uh, you know their new critical minerals budget and other other potential you know sources of of infrastructure support. Um, you know, in particular, the road is you know is a key. Uh, we've seen key to the project, and it's a substantial capex for 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 a project to to you know to to have 170 kilometer road. Uh, we are in discussions with you know potential infrastructure support, uh, you know from from the federal government, and certainly would be you know it would be uh, a strong message and and I think strong uh, you know a, you know a show of support that that would that would uh, you know I think bring confidence to to all our you know investors and other stakeholders to see that. Great. Uh, looking on the on the corporate side overall, do you anticipate a uh, reverse stock split or share consolidation? Yeah, so certainly something we've been you know you know discussing and 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 you know I, I guess I've said in the past you know I'm I'm very open to to doing it at the right timing. Um, I think you know later uh, this you know or you know, a bit later this year um, you know potentially in conjunction with. Uh, you know, uh, financing, um, you know, that we will be doing, you know, as part of our, um, uh, you know, as part of our rolling, you know, a bridge loan in, into, into a, a rights offering um, would be an opportune time. And, and uh, um, so we're looking at that, we're, you know, we're looking into those details right now. Great. Uh, and looking at recent news here, uh, what are the terms of the debt with, uh, resource capital funds. Are there any warrants or shares or anything attached to that? Yeah, no, there's no warrant or, or shares. It's a straight eight percent, um, you know, interest rate. Um, you know, which which I think is very you know reasonable in in the you know, in the circumstance, and that uh, um, you know we currently expect to go you know into as far as a repayment. It's similar to you know a, a loan we the company did do uh, just over a year and a half ago. Uh, and then enroll that into a rights offering, where at least you know all shareholders get an opportunity uh, to to participate, and and uh, and we'd expect um, uh, you know you know RCF to participate to to take out the the bridge. Okay, great. Um, and obviously, you're planning to do some drilling this year, and it. I think from from the press releases, most of that is more oriented or geotechnical and some some aspects of the mining. Uh, but will you also have assay results from that? And and what areas will you be drilling? 
Yeah. So on the the geotech drilling is you know is is focused on the the entire of the um, primarily the, the you know measured and indicated portion you know first kilometer and a bit of, of strike length, uh, and then the geotech drilling is is focused really on the first you know three three to five years uh, you know which which is you know primarily kind of the first half of that. Um, the and we will have assay results, although it is focused, you know, you know, again, primarily on 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 the, the geotechnical you know information as well as you know, um, you know enough bulk to go to at least on the metallurgical side, you know, but all, approximately five hundred kilograms to to go to to met testing. Um, but also, in addition, we are just in the process of of looking to secure a second rig that would give us a, you know additional availability uh not only number one you know flexibility to to accomplish the you know that proposed that stated work program uh but also look at you know a, you know adding to to the existing work pr program uh both in you know potentially in some uh, drilling that that would you know take out uh, take on where we left off last year in terms of uh you know some drilling in the inferred area to to look at uh, potentially converting, you know, some inferred into into indicated, uh, as well as uh, you know, expanding expanding the inferred. So, so we are currently evaluating that and and do, um, which you know, we'll we'll give further information on. But we do expect to be in a position to to bring in uh, bring in a second drill rig. Great. Um, and you had mentioned this in in the presentation, but what condition are the old uh, mine buildings in? Can you use any of the the old equipment? Yeah, so I mean, look, it's, uh, you know, obviously some of the equipment's been you know in use for for forty years, and you know, and so some of it, uh, uh, you know, either you know requires continuous maintenance, or, or in the case of some of the surface equipment, like mobile equipment, um, you, know, re you know, requires uh, you know. Some replacement. There's been there've been some new pieces of equipment brought in in, in prior years. Um, as far as building specifically, I mean the the main administration building is in very good shape. Uh, there's some small um, you know repairs that we're doing uh, this year immediately to to be able to maintain it you know in the shape that it that it's been in. But the overall structure and, and foundation, et cetera, similar to the mill building. Um, you know what what's in poor condition is is you know there are photos of a number of the. Uh, uh, you know the trailers that were you know existing camp buildings um, uh, and 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 those over you know such a long period of time have you know many of them um, you know are not are not usable currently so we'll be you know we'd be we have a plan to be bringing in you know one of our first you know um, equipment brought in on on the the first you know winter road the first you know complete winter road you know is bringing in in new camp uh, buildings but but for now you know the existing buildings we have you know we're, we we can uh, you know comfortably you know run you know the activities that we we have as sort of camp camp level type activities. Um, and one question here, kind of circling back on the on uh, the debt and the rights offering. Can you tell us more about the rights, uh, the rights issue you, you would be contemplating? Yeah, so I mean, we'd be we'd be looking at a, um, you know, a rights offering to be, uh, um, you know, at a minimum size of, uh, you know, of approximately, you know, of a minimum size of, of the existing uh, facility we just signed with with RCF of 6 million uh, US. So probably, you know, in the in the six to, to 10 million range size um and you know again you know as being a um uh, you know and and i guess timing you know being in um uh in late q3 um uh you know or or into q4 um you know a rights offering that that you know, would would you know primarily be you know serve as a uh you know a, a, a bridge to 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 the RCF capital to go you know to be able to convert from debt to equity as well as be open for for you know all shareholders um, and would be structured you know similar to you know, how we we've, we've done in the past um, and typically you know are structured um, um, you know and, and and are you know done by by way of prospectus uh, and are typically structured with with uh, um, you know, a sort of a prescribed uh, you know, discount to to you know, market trading prices at the time. Great. 
Um, one general question here. Um, obviously, the project has a fairly long history with past operators doing a fair amount of work. What makes now the time to advance toward production? Great, thanks. Well, the, I mean, you know, I think the the primary reason is is you know being we're on the cusp of you know those these final amended you know permits you know literally in. I mean, if it's not days, uh, you know, I guess, you know, months, uh, within a few months, you know, of, of having those that, that put this you know, project into a position to be developed. It is one of the the few, I mean, it's really is the next major scale project, you know, available uh, to be built, certainly in the NWT, of which there's a great need. And, you know, the, you know, the backdrop behind that is that, you know, the, the diamond mines will all be, you know, closing within the next three, five to 10 years. Uh, and you know, unless further expiration is found, but my understanding is it's limited. Um, and you know, there's there's an extreme you know need to have a replacement. And you know, there's there's three pretty uh, you know three to four advanced projects in in the NWT of significant scale. Ours being being one and being the you know the next of of a significant size that's you know, available to be developed. So uh, you know, permitting is one. Number two, I think you know the critical minerals distinction. Um, you know, it's 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 a it's a large motivator. You know, perhaps not for for the average equity investor, but but for um, you know for governmental and other you know stakeholders like that. Uh, you know, this is you know these are part of every discussion that we have with with uh, you know with other governments. So you know, I am hopeful that you know that leads to continued or greater support than than we received so far. Um, you know, and and zinc. Uh, prices that have been, you know, you know, strong for probably much longer so far than than a lot of people would have predicted. Um, you know, initially it was caused by uh, by some of the energy prices and and short, and then their first smelter shortages in in uh, constraints, you know, in Europe. But this has gone on, you know, you know, far beyond that. You know, I think you know a lot of projections, you know, show you know very strong market. And I'm not saying it's going to be a dollar seventy a pound for. Uh, you know, for forever, but but I think you know at least even a base price you know that's higher than than what you know pretty much all financial parties and institutions have been using to date, um, you know, which is at or below our you know and, and often cases of you know our prices using the PEA, and if you, you you knock that up even just a bit higher, um, you know you know this is you know very substantial. You add that to our grade, um, you know, very substantial you know profitability, and I think you know this is the uh, you know, this is a time. What else is the time? I mean, you know, the the local community support and and leadership, you know, I think is as, as best as it's as it's ever been. Um, and you know, and you know, we're very committed to you know wanting to to bring this project not only for the you know primarily for the benefit of our shareholders and investors um, and other financial stakeholders, but but also very very much so for for local. Uh, communities and you know employments and, and employment and, and other benefits you know, to the region. So, um, you know, our, our you know I, I strongly believe that you know, we, we are lining up you know all those different stakeholders and uh, you know matter of coming together um, and you know and, and making it happen. I think that and the key to making it begin is is um, getting access you know road access to to the project. Our first winter road. I guess I should add that you know we we the first. You know, initial winter road. You know, we plan to bring in. You know, speaking of the question on equipment, you know, bring in a couple million dollars of 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 new mobile equipment that we can use to to start doing other you know, or you know build on the activities we can do on site with clearing and other uh, other site uh, prep early works and site prep activities, uh, and you know, and then start to you know improve some of uh, you know things like buildings and, and other that, you know, uh, you know, bring, you know, improve the, the site infrastructure uh, and be in a position to, you know, to move into the full all season road. Great. I guess one, one overall closing question here, and, and you've touched on it before, but just to review what news might we expect to have uh, over the coming weeks and months? Sure. I mean, I think you'll, you know, just to, Touch it, maybe not in the exact exact same order, but uh, you know, closing of of uh, you know agreement with with uh, our you know our our third and you know final partner, First Nation partner, uh, uh, you know, permits probably at a couple different stages of news in terms of there's the the permits that relate to the 2,400 tons per day water license and land use permit, uh, you know, the, the finalization of, of permits for uh, for the phase one of the road, the winter road, um, you know, coming. You know, in between there, or, or and, and probably subsequent, you know, 
drill and other you know drilling data and other project data some of the studies that we mentioned um you know though that information you know will, will likely take a bit longer in terms of you know the drilling may take a you know two three months but then then a lot in the case of metallurgical for example all that material has to be gathered first before being sent to the the lab and then processed into studies so some of that information um you know may not may not you know start coming in until you know september october november leading that into you know into starting the the fees uh and then and then you know you know we, we have a number of avenues we're looking for financing for that winter road um and being in a position to make you know announcement about that to be able to begin you know begin construction on winter road those are probably you know the key uh key highlights and um you know, for the rest of 2022. great all right well i would like to thank uh, rowan hazelton for presenting today and thank you everyone for tuning in just a reminder that red cloud securities will be back tomorrow afternoon when our webinar series continues with Consolidated Uranium presenting uh, Thursday, May 26th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Have a great rest of your day. Okay, thanks everyone, appreciate it.